How's it going guys? My name is Dom. Now today I'm going to be talking about why I almost never use let in JavaScript. Okay, so if you're someone who thinks about whether or not to use const or let with your variables, you might want to stick around to get some perspective into uh, my mindset and what I do when it comes to my JavaScript code because in almost all scenarios now, const is the number one that's the default and then I change to let if I need to. So having a look at this example right here, it's a bit of JavaScript code which gets a submit button on the page. Now, we're gonna be getting to React very shortly but for this vanilla JavaScript example, the reason why const is used is because this button is simply not gonna be changed as the code goes on. That button is always gonna be there on the page. It's a simple reference to that button using const, okay? Now, when you might use let with HTML elements might be in situations where you want to change the referenced element. For example, if you have a HTML table and the active row changes, depending on what the user is doing, or maybe the active div changes or the active card, this is where let might come in handy because you're gonna want to change that variable based on what the user is doing. It is simply just a placeholder to represent some information about what's happening on the page. So you see there, in those two examples, the constant is a reference to the button and the let is a ever-changing thing to do with states on the page, okay? This here not only applies to front-end development, it may also apply to the back-end, okay? Things that might never change, you put inside your constants and things that change, you put inside your let. Uh, declarations. Okay. Now, also worth mentioning when it comes to let, it is useful in scenarios where you have logic to compute. Let's say you have a user on your website and you want to determine their status. Are they active, inactive? Maybe they're suspended, right? So you might have a variable called status using let and default to active. Then you have some logic. If the user has not logged in in five years, you might say they're inactive. Then you might say, okay, if they've got three strikes, they're now gonna be suspended. So you have that let with the default and you apply logic to then change that value. This is pretty much the only time that I find myself using let in JavaScript these days, okay? It's also worth talking about objects and arrays because a quite common uh, thing you'll hear is if you want to change a value, you use let, and if you want to keep the value the same, you use const, okay? That is a good observation and a good description of let versus const, but it can be misunderstood when it comes to arrays and objects. Why? Because if you were to add an item to an array or update it or delete an item, okay? That there is technically changing the array, but it is still the same array. The difference between const and let is gonna be in the reassignment of that value, okay? If you have a cupboard and you put a box inside the cupboard, it's still the same cupboard, right? So if you see an equals to something else, so your array is now equal to something else, that's when let is required. But I think for most scenarios, when it comes to objects and arrays versus primitive values like strings, numbers, and booleans, you pretty much, in almost every scenario, are gonna wanna use a const for arrays and objects because you're probably not gonna find yourself having to reassign them as often as your primitive values. Now, when it comes to React, there's even more reason not to be using let, okay? Because you might store a bit of state which says, is the drop-down menu currently open? It might say const open bracket drop-down open, then set drop-down open equal to use state, and you might set it to false by default. But here's the thing, yeah? You are changing 
the state, okay, you might change it from false to true if the user right clicks or whatever it might be, but it's still a constant because you call the setter. You say set drop down open. This here is going to trigger a re render in React, and your constant of drop down open is going to get its new value of true, but you're still not changing it using equals. And that's why in React, there's even less reason to be using let because yeah, it works on those renders. Your function, the component is gonna be rendered multiple times. So your constant always stays the same. Now, of course you can use let's in React, okay? For your computed values, again, just like the user status example, it's also gonna work. But for the most part, const is probably gonna do the job. Now, why do I make this video? Well, it's because if you have more constants in your code, it's gonna be easier to read uh, by somebody else. If I read some code and I just see a bunch of lets there, my first thought is, how do I even begin to understand now how all these values might change? So there's more upfront thinking about the values and how they change if there's a bunch of lets versus the constants. Because with the constants, I can almost guarantee that the code below it is gonna be a lot simpler to follow with less conditionals. And that is all for this video. If you enjoyed it and you wanna see me talk a bit more, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.